My dear children of the whole world, as the Holy Christmas season comes round each year, the message of Jesus, who is light in the midst of darkness, echoes once more from the crib of Bethlehem in the ears of Christians and re-echoes in their hearts with an ever new freshness of joy and piety. It is a message which lights up with heavenly truth a world that is plunged in darkness by fatal errors. It infuses exuberant and trustful joy into mankind, torn by the anxiety of deep, bitter sorrow. It proclaims liberty to the sons of Adam, shackled with the chains of sin and guilt. It promises mercy, love, peace to the countless hosts of those in suffering and tribulation who see their happiness shattered and their efforts broken in the tempestuous strife and hate of our stormy days. The church bells, which announce this message in every continent, not only recall the gift which God made to mankind at the dawn of the Christian era, they also announce and proclaim a consoling reality of the present, a reality which is eternally young, living, and life-giving. It is the reality of the true light which enlighteneth every man that cometh into this world, and which knows no setting. The eternal Word, who is the way, the truth, and the life, began his mission of saving and redeeming the human race by being born in the squalor of a stable and by thus ennobling and hallowing poverty. He thus proclaimed and consecrated a message which is still today the word of eternal life. We turn from the crib of the Prince of Peace, confident that his grace is diffused in all hearts to you, beloved children, who recognize and adore in Christ your Savior. We turn to all those who are united with us, at least by the bond of faith in God. We turn finally to all those who would be free of doubt and error and who desire light and guidance. And we exhort you with suppliant paternal insistence not only to realize fully the dreadful gravity of this hour, but also to meditate upon the vistas of good and supernatural benefit which it opens up and to unite and collaborate towards the renewal of society in spirit and truth. As the church and the entire human race were consecrated to the sacred heart of Jesus, so that in reposing all hope in him, he might become for them the sign and pledge of victory and salvation. So we in like manner consecrate ourselves forever also to thee and to thy immaculate heart, our mother and queen, that thy love and patronage may hasten the triumph of the kingdom of God, and that all nations, at peace with one another and with God, may proclaim thee blessed, and with thee may raise their voices to resound from pole to pole in the chant of the everlasting Magnificat of glory, love, and gratitude to the heart of Jesus, where alone they can find truth and peace.